The main problem with our current food system is that for around 60 or 70 years now, the farming systems have been extractive. And as a result, we've now reached critically low levels of soil fertility. We've lost a lot of the biodiversity and we've compromised the nutritional integrity of the food that is produced. And the farming systems have to change profoundly if we are going to leave our children with a habitable planet. My name is Patrick Holden. I'm founder and CEO of the Sustainable Food Trust. If you ask most people on the street, oh, what do you think about eating meat? They'll say, well, meat's bad. And the worst meat is red meat from ruminant animals. That means cows and sheep that emit methane. So I'm trying to eat less of it. And the meat that I will be able to eat still is chicken. And in fact, the reverse is true. In a post-regenerative farming system, we'll have to more or less give up eating chicken altogether. Cheap chicken from industrial farming will go because we will only have half the grain production. The same with pork and the same with dairy products from mega intensive dairies. Whereas grass-fed red meat from cows and from sheep and from dairy systems like the one we are practicing here, that can continue to form a significant part of your sustainable regenerative diet in the future. Now most people don't know that. There's a vast amount of confusion uh, amongst the public about what people should eat to be sustainable and healthy. And the truth is that in the future, sustainably managed livestock will play a central role in rebuilding the fertility that we've lost during my farming lifetime. So what we need now is a well-informed consumers who understand the difference between the unsustainable plants and animals, which are part of the problem, and the sustainable animal systems and products, which are part of the solution, and eat accordingly. Food waste is a very interesting manifestation of unsustainable farming systems. It's said that up to 50% of total food production is wasted from, as it were, plough to plate. It's a feature of an unsustainable farming system. We used to be carrot growers here for around 25 years, supplying the supermarkets. And the grade out requirements of the supermarkets were so stringent that we used to have to throw away 50% of the carrots we grew. So what we did with those waste carrots was we fed them to the cows. And of course that's not waste, that's recycling a product which is highly nutritious and was helping the cows produce healthy milk. So imagine a future where we vastly reduce or we even eliminate food waste then it would be possible to move towards farming systems which produce less food of higher quality and greater nutrient density. I think malnutrition is a growing problem, but of course it's a subtle issue because half the population is overweight or obese and the other half are suffering from various kinds of nutritional deficiency. When we buy a shopping basket of food in a supermarket today, it is not as nutrient dense as it was 40 or 50 years ago. So we have a food system, part of which is an underclass of people for whom the affordability of food is a key barrier. And as a result, they probably are buying degraded food from highly industrial, highly processed food systems. And that is probably compromising their health those same food products which are produced from intensive farming systems which have then been highly processed are deficient in key micronutrients. We currently live in a world where there is international food trade and a low degree of food security because if there was a sudden interruption as there was of course during the Second World War because the Germans were sinking all the convoys with the U-boats it became very difficult for us to maintain those supplies of staple foods. And the history shows us that during the Second World War, very few people wasted food because food insecurity was such a, an issue. People valued food.
They paid more for it, it was more expensive and they didn't throw it away. And I believe it's possible to move forward to a system like that where waste becomes a feature of the past, not the future. Farming is a very major contributor towards greenhouse gas emissions, estimated variously as being up to 30% of total emissions from the farming and food system as a whole, if you include transportation. But the wonderful news about farming is that whereas it's been part of the problem for the last few decades, if we change our farming practices, we can actually make farming part of the solution because it's the only area of public life where we can actually take perhaps up to 100 parts per million of CO2 out of the atmosphere and lock it back in the soil to build soil carbon stocks. This will be possible if we adopt regenerative farming methods based on crop rotations and the use of grazing livestock to rebuild the soil fertility that has been lost during the extracted period. It would mean profound changes in the food that we produce, but it would mean that we could move away from being extractive to being fertility building and therefore carbon sequestering as a farming industry as a whole. I think the farmers of the future will come to realise that we have to see nature as teacher. So the best farming practices will evolve and be maintained if we understand nature and farm in harmony with her. Because nature is a manifestation of balanced equilibrium of food production, of the vast diversity of animals and plants that constitute our ecosystems and a stability and a harmonious, ongoing, natural functioning ecosystem. And the question is whether we can shift to regenerative farming systems at scale, global scale, in the time available, which is probably 10 to 20 years, to avoid irreversible climate change. The vast majority of the habitable area of planet Earth is now farmed. So if we want to ensure that the planet is habitable for future generations. We have to change the way we farm. Farms have been part of the problem, but through changes in farming practice, we can make them part of the solution.